Like Brother Felix Y. Manalo, the executive minister before him, Brother Iranio led the Iglesia Ni Cristo triumphantly with a constant parade of successes. Brother Iranio had witnessed how the church, since the time of the messenger, the first executive minister, became strong because God blessed the church for upholding the biblical principles of unity. Throughout his administration of the Iglesia Ni Cristo, Brother Iranio also saw how God continued to bless the church as it maintained its unity under his leadership as its one executive minister. To do this, to truly remain one body upholding one true faith, the entire Iglesia Ni Cristo must continue to recognize, even long after he would be gone, only one overall leader, the man who would be the next executive minister. On May 6, 1994, in a meeting called by Brother Iranio Manalo, all of the church's district ministers, along with the executive minister's senior staff, took part in a historic meeting at the session hall of the Central Temple. In that meeting, Brother Eduardo Manalo was unanimously elected as Deputy Executive Minister. At the time, Brother Eduardo was a minister of the gospel assigned as the coordinator supervising the Metro Manila districts. The following day, in a special worship service broadcast live via satellite to several congregations around the world, Brother Iranio presented to the entire church the man who would one day succeed him as Brother Eduardo took oath as Deputy Executive Minister of the Iglesia Ni Cristo, the Church of Christ. In the Bible, during the time of ancient Israel as God's chosen people, Moses had prepared Joshua and King David had prepared Solomon. At the start of the Christian era, the Lord Jesus had prepared the apostles, with Apostle James making the final decisions for the first century Church of Christ. In the same way, Brother Iranio saw that Brother Felix had prepared him. Now it was his turn to prepare Brother Eduardo. In all the years that followed since the oath taking in 1994, it was Brother Iranio himself who guided and taught Brother Eduardo in the administration of the entire church. And it was Brother Eduardo whom he would send not only all over the Philippines, but also on visitations to see the condition of the church in different parts of the world. These visitations included officiating the worship services in celebration of the 30th anniversary of the Iglesia Ni Cristo in the West in July of 1998, with the auditoriums of the Neil Bladesdale Center in Honolulu, Hawaii, and the San Jose Civic Center in San Jose, California, filled to capacity with brethren. Two years later, Brother Eduardo was sent on an exhaustive whirlwind tour to the United States, visiting 16 local congregations and conducting three separate conferences of ministers and evangelical workers, covering thousands of miles in over four weeks. In 2006, Brother Iranio also sent Brother Eduardo to visit congregations in Europe, the Middle East, and Southeast Asia. Brother Iranio wanted to make sure that Brother Eduardo could see the condition of the entire church all over the world, while at the same time, the brethren could also know the one who would eventually lead them. On August 31, 2009, barely a month after the Iglesia Ni Cristo's 95th anniversary, Brother Iranio Manalo passed away. Sadness gripped the entire church. With the passing of Brother Iranio, it was time for the Deputy Executive Minister, Brother Eduardo Manalo, to step in as Executive Minister of the Iglesia Ni Cristo. All members of the church knew that Brother Iranio already had a well-prepared successor. When the eventual time would come for him to be laid to rest, Brother Iranio did not want the church to be overcome with grief. Never should the mission of salvation be immobilized or stagnant, no matter how painful the trials are. All the more, the Iglesia Ni Cristo should be called to action with the day of salvation drawing closer ever faster. The challenges that uh, your founder had uh, many years ago are quite different from the challenges that Kaidwarda now face, faces. No? So, um, so it's, it's a different era, different set of challenges for him. As a leader, I think it was uh, he's well prepared for, for the challenges ahead. So I have no doubt that the uh, Iglesia will continue to prosper under his leadership. No?
as it has under his, his predecessors. On September 7, 2009, Brother Eduardo officially assumed the office of the Executive Minister of the Iglesia de Cristo. He was faced with a daunting task and several formidable challenges not only of leading the entire church from great sadness. The task, overseeing millions of his brothers and sisters in the faith, found all over the world in faithfully obeying the Bible-based teachings of the church. The challenges, destructive and even more frequent natural calamities, global economic crisis, rapidly declining moral values, and what many experts have labeled a worsening religious recession. To respond to this difficult task, Brother Eduardo followed the example in the Bible of the leaders of the first century Church of Christ. Paul said, Let's go back and visit all the brothers and sisters in every city where we preach the Lord's word. Let's see how they are doing. Immediately attending to the spiritual needs of the brethren, Brother Eduardo began a series of exhausting pastoral visitations that would end up taking him without rest several times circling the globe. The task was not easy. Visiting brethren thousands of miles apart, crossing various time zones while still keeping abreast of all the church's needs was grueling and even dangerous. The office of the executive minister was not only in Quezon City, Philippines, but wherever in the world he was visiting. From country to country, one local congregation to another, he brought to his beloved brothers and sisters in the faith the words of God and preached to them the same message taught by the previous executive ministers of the church. In just five years, Brother Eduardo conducted over 250 pastoral visitations, leading worship services in different parts of the globe. In his homilies, Brother Eduardo reminded the brethren that although Brother Urania was laid to rest, he had not left them defenseless in the good fight for the faith. Even until the last moment of his life, Brother Urania worked so hard that every church member could remain assured of salvation on Judgment Day. The brethren were reminded that Brother Iranio had laid for them a strong foundation for their faith, as it was anchored not on Brother Iranio, but on the true gospel first preached in these last days by God's messenger. From great sorrow emerged a church greatly edified. Even when the church was still recovering from grief, problems began to come one after the other. Well, uh, certainly calamities uh, are a major uh, problem, no? It, it, because typhoons visit us regularly and we don't always seem to be prepared for it. Quickly responding to the calamities, the church administration, through the leadership of Brother Eduardo, consolidated the church resources and extended help to members of the Iglesia de Cristo, as well as non-members. Brother Eduardo immediately called for a meeting of ministers and church workers and instructed them to lead the church through these afflictions. He encouraged them to carry on with what the former leaders had labored and sacrificed for, to lead the church towards spiritual maturity and perfect unity. In this way, no matter what the situation in life may be, no matter how strong the calamities that come, church members will remain holding on to the hope of salvation on Judgment Day. On the part of the, of the Kapatids, or the followers of the church, the degree of devotion that they display uh, to, their, to their faith is, is, is admirable. No? And on the part of the church itself, you could see things are well organized. The attention to detail is, a, is, is, uh, is uh, superior, no? uh, comparable to, to a well-run organization. So um, nothing is left to chance. Uh, you could sense that you anticipate issues around the corner. You address those issues realistically. And um, the care with which you pay attention to solving those problems are, again, uh, first class. The church, on its way to its centennial celebration, continued to actively launch various endeavors for the brethren's edification and propagation. They continued to participate in the evangelism project that every member brings someone to the faith to bring honor and glory to God. As the church prepared for the centennial, a challenge arose. 
The church had no place to hold the gathering, a place where a huge number of attendees could be accommodated. Because of this, the church administration approved the construction of the Philippine Arena. The 55,000 seating capacity theater-like building, upon completion, would be the world's largest domed arena. The executive minister envisioned the Philippine Arena as the centerpiece for the Ciudad de Victoria, which literally means City of Victory. Also to be constructed concurrently in the Ciudad de Victoria with the Philippine Arena are the Philippine Sports Stadium, the Philippine Sports Center, with future plans as well for a modern well-equipped hospital, the EGM Medical Center, a medical school, other extensions of the New Era University, such as the New Era Sports Academy and other facilities. In the Ciudad de Victoria, Brother Eduardo envisioned an eco-tourism center that could be used not only for the large-scale church activities, but also for the development of the central Luzon and the hosting of international events for the welfare and benefit of the entire Philippines. And I think it will bring a lot of uh, honor to our country. And also it will be the venue for all the big, biggest events. And I think that arena can also be used for helping the poor. For the Iglesia Cristo Centennial Celebration, the Church Administration outlined three goals, all based on the Holy Scriptures. To praise and thank our Almighty God, who has been upholding and loving the Iglesia Cristo for 100 years. To remember all the great deeds that the hand of God has done for the Iglesia Cristo in these last days. And to leave a lasting memory for the next generation of members of the Iglesia Cristo. Early on, it was clear to the executive minister that the celebration of 100 years of God's blessings to the church would require the talents of the brethren from all over the world. At the same time, he could see the growing threat to the members' spiritual lives and the culture of permissiveness of the world surrounding the members. Around the world, in other religions and churches all over the world, there has been a diminishing number of attendees in their fellowship gatherings or their masses. Certainly in Western cultures, that which used to be Christendom, um, it might be a depression in parts of Europe, a, a little depression in Canada, and a great recession here in the United States. The Brethren's faith was not only under assault by a great religious recession, the Iglesia Cristo families, especially the youth, were also threatened by the spread of moral degradation with things as simple as pop songs or television shows promoting activities and a lifestyle contrary to biblical Christian principles. To keep the members from being pulled in the same direction as the declining conditions of the world around them, the church administration took steps to further develop the Christian family organizations consisting of the Booklord, Kadiwa, and Binhi organizations. While still Deputy Executive Minister, under the administration of Brother Iranio Manalo, Brother Eduardo had already brought proposals to the executive minister to continuously address directly the attack on Christian values through various media. He also released animated documentaries about the Sugo and Brother Iranio to help the youth understand and value their compassionate labor for the church. As a composer and arranger himself, Brother Eduardo has continuously encouraged brethren to compose music for the church. He has produced and released CDs of contemporary Christian music and audiobooks featuring Bible verse reading paired with original INC hymns, which are all based on the books and lessons of executive ministers before him. The ideals of Brother Felix and Brother Urano have always been the inspiration of Brother Eduardo's projects. As executive minister, Brother Eduardo appointed his son, Brother Angelo Urano Manalo, a minister of the gospel, coordinator of the Christian Family Organizations, or CFO, to ensure the success of the various activities and projects launched by the CFO. And these activities have flourished. The activities under the CFO have aided in not only developing the skills and talents of the brethren, but also in helping oversee them to keep them away from societal ills that have become pervasive all over the world. Um that there are high standards in terms of family life, in terms of uh, social life within the INC. Through all these activities of the church, 
the brethren were taught to carry on, fight for, and win the good fight of faith. My dear friends, I was doing my best to write you about the salvation we share in common when I felt the need of writing at once to encourage you to fight on for the faith which once and for all God has given to His people. As a result, the Iglesia de Cristo has not become a victim of religious recession. Instead, through God's help and mercy, the Iglesia de Cristo has shown rapid progression rapid expansion. While developing more ways to edify the faith of the members of the Iglesia de Cristo, Brother Eduardo Manalo continued the church's mission of bringing more people to the path of salvation. In doing this, the church administration taught an important principle to succeed. So no matter what your task is, work hard. Always do your best as the Lord's servant not as man's. The church campaigned for the intensive propagation of God's words while expanding the means for the message to reach more people. SEBSI was launched to directly oversee the expansion of INC TV and INC Radio. An integral part of the SEBSI's growth has been its concentration not only in the English and Filipino languages. Most shows now include sign language and shows now air in Japanese, French, Spanish, German, Mandarin, and other languages. Sharing the faith through the internet also began by means of the church's various websites. More and more people became interested in attending the Bible studies and worship services in the church. As an outsider or as a non-member, uh, you know, you, you feel the sincerity of the people. Uh, in the church and sincerity you feel the passion you know the passion for service to Christ it's not just service to Christ of course but service to humanity to others you know which is very uh, you know very important and uh, you know that's what would attract uh, non-members uh, immigrants new immigrants uh, uh, you know to the Iglesia Ni Cristo Church I fully admire the Iglesia Ni Cristo why because of the passionate faithfulness of the members, Jesus Christ. You know, I wish that our relationship could be as passionate in the faithfulness. To further intensify the missionary works, the church continued to proclaim the words of God both in great and small assemblies. I proclaim righteousness in the great assembly. See, I do not keep my mouth closed. As you know, Lord, I did not hide your righteousness in my heart. I spoke about your faithfulness and salvation. I did not conceal your constant love and truth from the great assembly. The Brethren's commitment to share the news of salvation led to a remarkable increase in the Church's membership worldwide. With congregations spreading all over the world, the church was conducting baptisms practically every day. I believe that the INC, if the numbers are true, uh, sort of in the five to seven million range, uh, may be the largest form of Christian, uh, of indigenous Christianity, one of the largest certainly, and uh, one of the few that is uh, uh, exporting itself, it has begun missional activity outside of the region in, in which it was born. In the case of the Philippines, uh, for the INC, INC seems to be pretty unique in that respect. Seeing the great willingness of the brethren to share their faith, the church administration further intensified its campaign for propagation and launched the project Abundant Fruit Bearing, based on the words of the Lord Jesus in John 15, 16, and 8. With the Iglesia de Cristo's brilliant success in propagation, an important mandate from God needed to be fulfilled by the church administration. God says so. Clear lots of ground for your tents. Make your tents large. Spread out. Think big. Use plenty of rope. Drive the tent pegs deep. You're going to need lots of elbow room for your growing family. 
You're going to take over whole nations. You're going to resettle abandoned cities. The church needed bigger and more worship buildings to accommodate the continuously increasing number of church members. Since all the projects of the Iglesia de Cristo, including the construction of worship buildings, are all financed by means of the voluntary contributions of the members, a challenge was only getting bigger. Church members could be found in countries that were gravely affected by financial crises before. But this problem was different. Many churches uh, and, uh, that are being that were being built at that time in the United States were encumbered with pretty significant uh, loans. There were uh, repeated references to churches that were losing their buildings uh, or that were being um, were going bankrupt. That they simply couldn't maintain the loans. Uh, hundreds of thousands uh, did either uh, put their construction on hold or. Uh, found it very difficult to service their loans. Innumerable religious organizations were forced to sell the buildings they used for their religious services. Facing this difficult situation, the church administration encouraged all brethren to hold on to God's words and the Bible for guidance. What you do to serve others not only provides for the needs of God's people, but also produces more and more prayers of thanksgiving to God. You will honor God through this genuine act of service because of your commitment to spread the good news of Christ and because of your generosity in sharing with them and everyone else. The executive minister carried on with the church's plan to put in order appropriate and dignified worship buildings for local congregations where members all over the world could worship God. And true to his promises, God helped the church overcome the challenges. Because of religious crises and fiscal needs, religions and churches are putting their buildings up for sale. Out of God's mercy, the Iglesia de Cristo was able to purchase many of these historic and landmark buildings, like the ones in Barcelona, Spain, Chicago, Illinois, Belfast, North Ireland, and Birmingham, England, saving them from completely shutting down. The church administration even approved that they be renovated to make them even more fitting for worship services. Now after dedication to God, these buildings have been opened to welcome not only members of the church, but also non-members in the community. The executive minister, Brother Eduardo Manalo, led the dedication of over 50 such Iglesia de Cristo worship buildings. Meanwhile, in the Philippines, over 600 worship buildings were constructed and dedicated to God in less than five years. And no matter where you are in the Philippines, the cleanest building that stands out is always the Iglesia de Cristo. I think finances is a very critical part of religion and church building. You know, the Iglesia de Cristo Church has shown that it's very accountable in terms of finances. And when you have accountable finances, people, of course, trust you. So there's a big trust factor uh, with the Ecclesia de Cristo because of the, you know, the, you know, the, the, how finances are managed. Since the life of God's people revolve around God's words in the Bible, leading every local congregation as a minister of the gospel entrusted to preach God's message and feed the members of the Church of Christ with God's words. As the church continues spreading rapidly around the world, the mission of the church in edification and propagation has a constant need for more ministers. As a result, the executive minister has been ordaining ministers of the gospel on January 2, 2010, in commemoration of the 85th birth anniversary of Brother Urania G. Manalo, barely four months after his passing, Brother Eduardo conducted his first ordination of ministers. 202 ministers were ordained on that occasion, including 63 coming from assignments in different parts of the world. This was succeeded by more ordinations not only in the Philippines, but also abroad, including those which were held in Humble, Texas, Heathrow, London, and Rome, Italy. On December 28, 2011, the first ordination outside the Philippines was held in Humble, Texas in the United States. On June 1, 2013, in Battersea, London in the United Kingdom, the first ordination of ministers was held in Europe. 
To date, Brother Eduardo has ordained over 2,500 ministers, including his son, Brother Angelo Iranio Manalo. To succeed even further in the task of evangelizing people from different cultures around the world, the church administration has made sure that the training of ministers at the College of Evangelical Ministry would continue to be enhanced. Brother Eduardo sponsored workshops in writing and translations and seminars for ministerial students, carrying on what the former executive ministers wanted for ministers to be trained in all fields beneficial to the church. The executive minister also initiated the establishment of various campuses for the school in different provinces and opened the Iglesia Cristo School for Ministry in Sacramento, California. More campuses are set to open in large cities in the Philippines and major cities worldwide, such as Rome, Italy, London, England, Toronto, Canada, and Sydney, Australia, for the training of ministers of the church. Meanwhile, thousands of new enrollees from various nationalities have been enrolling at CEM, prompting the church to construct a bigger and more modern school building along Central Avenue in Quezon City. Its inauguration is part of the year-long celebration of the church's centennial. To properly administer the spiritual well-being of the Iglesia de Cristo members and efficiently carry out all the projects of the church, the church administration expanded the various departments of the church and directed the construction of more office buildings in the central office complex. Administrative buildings were also expanded in the ecclesiastical districts around the world. Ten district office buildings. Europe main office. U.S. main office. He also inaugurated new buildings in the central office complex, including one for the INC Engineering and Construction Department the Honorata de Guzman Manalo Building for the Finance Department and Legal Department, and the Pilar Manalo Danao Building for the Choir and for Multimedia Projects. But in terms of organizational structure and in terms of, uh, um, of, of church management uh, and now international church management, uh, the INC may be one of the best. The Iglesia de Cristo also further advanced the New Era University by offering more courses and improving its facilities. So education is again the key for the future of the humankind. And I think we are doing a lot to educate, right? To improve the literacy rate of the church members and the children of your members. New Era University has not slowed down in expanding its educational offerings. The College of Music was launched in 2011, the College of Medicine in 2014. Being readied for opening as well are more undergraduate, graduate, and even vocational courses, all aimed at promoting quality education anchored on Christian virtues. The Church's care for educational opportunities for all can also be felt in the world-class facilities that have been allotted for NEU SPED, an educational program for children with special needs the church continued to reap success from one place to another. The situation of people's lives, however, was getting worse. Well, poverty existed, but it's not as severe as it is today. Uh, because, number one, the population is not as big as it is today. Uh, the cost of living was, is not as high as it is today. Well, you know, the vulnerable group of people are not necessarily confined to the Philippines. It's all over in any countries. You know that the number of people who are living with only one dollar a day, more than two billion. We have seven billion people but two billion people live with less than one dollar a day. Can you believe? Two dollars a day, one billion people. So there are neglect, so many neglected people, and it's increasing as the population itself grows. At the same time, natural disasters and calamities, which the Bible had foretold and the church administration has been warning people about, 
have not stopped escalating in intensity and scope. Devastating calamities that were once considered unusual have now become usual and have been getting worse in all regions of the world, leaving millions homeless and impoverished. The members of the Iglesia de Cristo demonstrated powerfully that their care in saving people was not only for the Day of Judgment, but even in this life. During the administration of Brother Iranio Manalo, Brother Eduardo had formed with the Executive Minister's blessing the organization known as SCAN, or the Society of Communicators and Networkers. Originally begun as an amateur ham radio group to link people all over the world for the sharing of the true faith, the organization expanded. With phone lines and cell phone towers down during times of calamity and radios the only effective means of communication, SCAN members began taking part in first aid and search and rescue operations while also assisting in the maintenance of peace and order. As dangerous typhoons, floods, and other natural calamities increased, SCAN members waded into the danger areas and many lives were saved. The Iglesia de Cristo's help for calamity victims did not stop there. Always inspired to obey the commandments of God. If there are poor, needy among you, your relatives or your countrymen, your brothers, in one of the town's gates of the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not be selfish, hard-hearted, or greedy, tight-fisted toward them. There will always be poor people in the land, so I command you to give freely. Open your hand to your neighbors, or relatives, or countrymen, brothers, and to the poor and needy in your land. The church intensified its efforts to extend help to those in need. On the 4th of February 2011, FYM Foundation was registered in the Philippines and in the United States on the 17th of May, 2012. Through the FYM Foundation and various church offices, the church has been one of the first to be on site in the hard-hit calamity areas for search and rescue operations and for the giving of free medical services and food packs to victims, whether or not they are members of the church. Because of the expanse of the humanitarian works the church had provided, its international aid for humanity activities have set Guinness World Records. The church set three Guinness World Records on February 28, 2012, during its massive international aid for humanity activity that was held in Parola, Manila in the Philippines. In addition to distributing hundreds of thousands of food and relief good packages to the poor, World records were set in areas of most blood pressure readings taken in 8 hours, most numerous blood glucose level tests in 8 hours, and largest dental health check. And I've seen the Iglesia Ni Cristo, you know, help out. Whether, you know, a mayor here asks for a cleanup, help in cleaning up, you know, graffiti in, in streets, uh, you know, in a food drive, there's a hurricane, uh, one of the one of the churches that uh, you know volunteers. One of the first churches to volunteer is the Iglesia de Cristo. What I would say about the Iglesia social work is that it is a bit more quiet, but you could sense that it is there when needed. No? You will always be there uh, when needed by the people. No? Not only I think with respect to your followers, but even with respect to Filipinos in general. The Iglesia has not fallen short at all in terms of what, uh, what the church feels it should do to the community. On November 8, 2013, Typhoon Haiyan, locally known as Typhoon Yolanda, brought immense destruction to the Philippines. Conveying a strong message to the whole world to never stop caring and extending help to the victims, members of the Iglesia de Cristo all over the world united for a common cause and held the worldwide walk for those affected by Typhoon Haiyan. February 15, 2014. Setting more Guinness World Records in the process, including the largest number of participants in a charity event and largest charity walk in 24 hours. The executive minister himself went to Tacloban Leyte to lead the groundbreaking of the EVM Self-Sustainable Community Resettlement Project where initially 1,000 houses are to be constructed along with the eco-farming, garment factory, and fish-drying factory. 
I'm aware of it that uh, you got that that big eco project uh, in in Leyte near the globe, and I you know followed it on the internet uh, the opening and groundbreaking. Uh, I think it's a it's a fantastic project. For a start, you have the um, the community uh, center, uh, help the uh, the homeless to get new homes, create employment. Uh, apparently, you're building several factories, and also um, you know land development. Um, that you know has a big impact on, uh, especially after this uh, tragic uh, typhoon. It has a, an impact and it helps a lot of people. So that's a wonderful effort. And you know, as you say, with the um, development in uh, in Leyte, I suppose you got other projects as well. Um, I mean, it's it's benefit it benefits the community in general and and uh, create employment and you know keep the family together, give them a new start in life. Hence, the church has been launching programs to protect the environment, such as cleanup drives, tree planting projects, and eco farming. Important law to reduce the social inequity and provide safety net for the poor people. Well, I think we continue to speak out against the social injustice, and you can also discipline your members to be productive but with the sensitivity to environmental issues. Meanwhile, the Iglesia de Cristo has also been combining the sharing of the people's two basic needs. The Lord Jesus Christ once said, Man cannot live on bread alone, but needs every word that God speaks. Under the My Countrymen, My Brethren campaign, the church has conducted what it calls in Filipino, Linga Pamamahayag, or International Aid for Humanity and Evangelical Mission. In these activities, the church provides medical services and distributes free food packs to all visitors along with the brethren who attend, after delivering to them the words of God. In less than five years, the church has invited over 50 million people to its Linga Pamamahayag, Hundreds of thousands have also expressed their willingness to join the Iglesia de Cristo. This activity continues to be held regularly in different parts of the world. In the INC Central Temple, the sweet sounds of victory and giving glory to God the Most High have been coming out even more beautifully and powerfully. On July 5, 2014, in a worship service led by Brother Eduardo Manalo, a new 20-ton pipe organ was used for the first time. This organ, consisting of over 3,000 individual pipes, was designed specifically for the Central Temple by the world-renowned A.E. Schluter Pipe Organ Company based in Georgia. On July 19, 2014, one of the largest and most beautiful houses of worship of the Iglesia de Cristo, a 3,000-seater worship building for the local congregation of Capitol in Quezon City, was dedicated in a special worship service officiated by the executive minister. And the victory parade continues. It's 100 years now, no? and I must congratulate the, the leaders of the Iglesia de Cristo for keeping the community uh, dynamic. It's alive, it's flourishing, not just in this country, but in the rest of the world where Filipinos and and even non-Filipinos. On July 24, 2014, the director of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines visited the central office complex and unveiled with Brother Eduardo Manalo the historical marker, signifying the government's recognition of the Iglesia de Cristo in the history of the Philippines. This monument is located near the very center of the compound. During the ceremony, the executive minister cited Jeremiah 9.23-24. Ganito ang sabi ng Panginoon, Huwag magmapuri ang marunong sa kanyang karunungan at huwag magmapuri ang makapangyarihan sa kanyang kapangyarihan. Huwag magmapuri ang mayaman sa kanyang kayamanan, kundi 
ang nagmamapuri ay dito magmapuri na kanyang nauunawaan at nakikilala ako na ako ang Panginoon na nagsasagawa ng kagandahang loob, ng katarungan at ng katwiran sa daigdig. Sapagkat sa mga bagay nito ay nalulugod ako, sabi ng Panginoon. Delegates from over 100 countries and territories have arrived in the Philippines. Tricolor flags drape the canopy of worship buildings. The celebratory mood is in the air. All over Manila, Iglesia de Cristo Centennial banners hang on every major street. On July 27, 2014, the church held a special worship service led by the executive minister, Brother Eduardo V. Manalo, in the newly inaugurated Philippine Arena. The 55,000-seater Mammoth Building and its adjacent Philippine Sports Stadium were not only filled to capacity, but more than 2 million worshippers as well gathered outside in tents and courtyards where plasma screens were set up. The worship service was broadcast live to more than 1,500 sites all over the world. The fruits of the church administration's care in overseeing the brethren and the Christian family organizations were abundant. A few hours after the special worship service, an oratory was held in the Philippine arena, with musical pieces written by members of the church and performed by brethren who came from all over the world. With these activities, the church has once again set two new Guinness World Records. These events were followed two days later by a multimedia experience, the musical Ang Bayan Moy Nagpupuri, Your Nation Praises You, that also included brethren who are Broadway performers. Two days after the musical about the history of the church, a stage play was held, which included members of the church who are professional actors and actresses in the Philippine stage and cinema, about the life of God's messenger aptly entitled Ang Sugo, a stage play. On August 1, also held in the Philippine arena, was the first international Tagisa ng Talino contest, a friendly competition among young church members aged 4 to 11 years old for them to learn more about the teachings of the Bible and the church's history. The next day, the 55,000 seats in the Philippine arena and the huge expansive lobby area were filled to capacity for the evangelical mission, as brethren joyously and devotedly shared the good news about God's master plan for salvation for the church through the Lord Jesus Christ. Ciudad de Victoria is not just a religious site. Surely it was constructed by Iglesia de Cristo. New Era University will have its new hospital there, new campus there, new sports facilities there. So it's not just the Philippine Arena, it's the entire city of victory, the Ciudad de Victoria, right? And which has not just religious, but secular purposes. That's the concept of religious worlding, an appeal to the world that it has arrived not just by constructing another religious site, but but constructing what is, could be a global marker, a world-class marker. Ciudad de Victoria is religious worlding. So in that sense, Iglesia de Cristo is no longer a Filipino religion, it is a world religion. All of the successes that the Iglesia de Cristo has achieved became possible because of only one reason. Ang sabi sa atin ng Biblia, Magkaroon anya kayo ng espiritu ng pagkakaisa. Paano natin patutunayan ang espiritu ng pagkakaisa ay nasa atin. Sa atin anyang pagsunod sa mga utos sa atin ng ating Panginoong Sokristo. Yan ang dahilan kung bakit lagi ninyong naririnig, mga kapatid. Magkaisa tayo. Gawin natin yung mga aral ng Diyos na itinuturo sa atin. Kailangan natin ang pagsunod. Huwag tayong hihiwalay sa pagsunod. Hinahanap ng ating Panginoong Diyos. Nakikita tayo sa lubos na pagkakaisa, sa espiritu ng pagkakaisa, sa pagsunod sa lahat ng mga aral at utos ng Diyos. Sapagat ang sabi ng Biblia, yan ang makaluluwalhati sa ating Panginoong Diyos. As the members of the Iglesia ni Cristo, continue to travel in this world. Ahead of them are even greater tests in life. Like athletes swimming against a strong current, members of the church must still struggle through the present times 
full of trials and difficulties. But they keep going. They continue to abound in faith, love, and hope, knowing that God has been showing all Iglesia Ni Cristo members the way through the church administration He has placed in the church. Sa atin ng Diyos, pagka kanyang gawain, kamangha-mangha, kagilagilalas. Pero kung mulaan niya doon lamang sa karunungan ng mga tao, ito niya ay mapapawi, ito niya ay maglalaho. Mga kapatid, ito ang aking tanong sa inyo. Ito ang ating isipin sa nangyayaring ito sa Iglesia ni Kristo at sa nangyayari sa ibang mga relihiyon alin ngayon ang tunay na relihiyon na sa ating Panginoong Diyos. Tama. Totoong ang ating pagka-Iglesia ni Kristo ay totoong sa ating Panginoong Diyos. Salamat sa Diyos sa loob ng isang daang taon ipinagkalob niya sa atin ang kanyang mga pagpapala. Dumaan man tayo sa mga malulungkot na panahon sa ating pagkaiglesa ni Kristo, hindi lamang dahil sa mga pagsubok, hindi lamang dahil sa mga pag-uusig, hindi lamang dahil sa mga kahadlangan, kundi maging ng pumanaw ang sugo at maging ang kapatid na Eranyo Manalo na namahala sa atin sa loob ng iglesia. Akala natin siguro ang iglesia ni Kristo ay hindi na makapagtataguyo. Subalit, pinatutunayan sa atin ng ating Panginoong Diyos hanggang ngayon ang gawain ito ay hawak ng kanyang kamay. Siya ang tunay na Diyos na Diyos nating mga iglesia ni Kristo. Siyang may hawak sa gawain ito na ating kinaaniban, tayo ay mga tunay na hinirang ng ating Panginoong Diyos.